Hello, my name's Dr. Matthew Harrison. I'm a Senior Lecturer in Learning Intervention at the Melbourne Graduate School of Education at the University of Melbourne. My background is that I'm a teacher and because of my love of learning and working particularly with kids who are autistic or neurodivergent, I did a PhD in education here at the University of Melbourne, trying to find ways that we could better support these kids to be able to access the social and academic side of school. So my research broadly looks at the area of inclusive education. So what we really want to do is to make sure that school is a safe and happy place for every child. My research really focuses on how we can use cooperative video games as tools to be able to build up social capacities and build up a sense of belonging for students who are neurodivergent, so students who have ADHD or who are autistic, and how we can use gaming as a space to value their knowledge and to make sure that they feel like they belong in their school communities. So the area of inclusive education is really meaningful to me on both personal and a professional level. Personally, I have had a long connection with people who are neurodivergent and I have many friends and colleagues who are autistic or have ADHD or have other neurological conditions or differences. Professionally, I worked with a large number of students who were neurodivergent, both in mainstream and inclusive schools right around the world. And I found that the social uh, connection element was really missing. How we can make school a more socially inclusive place so they feel safe and they feel happy and that they belong in their school community. So my work all centers around how can we get these kids to a place where school is somewhere they want to go. We use video games because they're an area of strength and interest for many, many of the kids we work with. I'm also a gamer myself. Uh, I started off using games early on in my teaching career as a way to, to connect with students who are potentially at risk of disengaging. And I found them a really good space in which I could use evidence-based teaching practices to be able to help them to develop all sorts of skills, both academic and socially. And then I found out gaming is also a really good way for them to teach me and give me feedback on their interests, what they want to focus on in the future, but also gave us a common language. So that was really important to me, was making sure their voices were heard in my classroom and in my research. So we use really carefully selected, commercially developed games that adhere to a number of principles. Uh, as part of my doctoral research, I identified 39 principles that are really important for creating the conditions for collaboration. We always say that games don't teach the skills, teachers teach skills, but the games create those in conditions. We use games where kids have to work together to complete the level. They cannot finish the games if they don't work as a team. And that idea of, of collective success is really important to the games that we use. The idea that everyone succeeds. And it's the idea that the games are things that are meaningful to them. So we use games like developed by Nintendo, like Super Mario Brothers 3D World, games like Rayman Legends, that are really well designed for this purpose. We are actually uh, we are actually exploring some work with developers right now. We've had a lot of interest from developers, both Australian developers and international developers. And I was really fortunate recently to be able to go to PAX. We had a booth at the PAX uh, Gaming Festival here in Melbourne, and we had a great opportunity to connect with renowned developers. So I was sort of in nerd heaven. It was brilliant. My proudest moment was, was co-founding Next Level Collaboration with my co-founder, uh, Jess Rowlings and the idea of taking the research that I did for my PhD and, and using that in conjunction with Jess's expertise, both professional and, and lived experience, and be able to actually run programs for children and, and young adults and to be able to have a real impact through having my work actually put into action. To be able to see the, their faces and to be able to, to see the actual progress they're making and to be able to employ people with lived experiences of neurodiversity or neurodivergence, that, that has been real highlight of my career so far. The reason I get out of bed in the morning and the thing that keeps me going when you do have a setback in your research agenda is really thinking about the ability to bring about change. Researchers have such an important role in society and they're in a relatively privileged position that they can highlight issues and bring about real change in society. And I just feel so fortunate to have that role. So when I'm having a difficult day, I stop and I really think about how I can use my position to be able to change lives. And that's what I say to my PhD students. I say, look, there will be hard times, but if you love what you're doing and you can really see the meaning behind it, you'll be able to overcome those challenges. And you'll be able to ask for that support you need to be able to continue on and to really be that change agent. I'm really excited for the future. I really hope that in the next five years, 
I can connect with other researchers right around the world. There's a growing number of digital game space support program researchers around the world in a whole different areas, not just neurodiversity, but more broadly in disability and in First Nations education. And I'd love to work and learn from these people and hopefully to be able to collaborate and to really have impact. And for me as a teacher, impact means actually changing things on the ground day to day for our students and, and our children and young adults. And I think research like teaching is best done as a team sport, working together.